Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to, I don't even know what is the name of the video or the series or anything, but this is a, a video or a series that I wanted to do for a long time, but let's admit it, I didn't have the ball. So let's try to phrase it as ups and downs. So let me let me tell you one thing straight. There is already a series in YouTube that is ups and downs, but I cannot think about another name. Maybe you can help me in the comments. And yeah, I'm not copying them. For sure, I'm not copying it. I'm just sharing my opinion because it's valuable, right? Let's move on. Monday Night Raw started with the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day opened the show and all of the Judgment Day said something. But the, the thing that, that resonated the most was Dominic Mysterio saying that he's the this generation Eddie Guerrero. That is not true for sure. And uh, the OC came out from that confrontation. The next thing that happened was Carl Anderson versus Finn Balor. Finn Balor won, but the highlights of the match were that Rhea Ripley body slammed uh, Lou Gallows. And after, after that, Rhea Ripley low blow uh, Kara Anderson without the referee seeing him, so Finn Balor won. Nothing too great, but I like the idea of OC versus The Judgment Day. There was a, even a segment later on the show uh, about the OC saying that they're having a real problem, probably teasing that they're gonna have a fourth member in the OC, which is I'm excited about, and that's why I'm gonna give them an up. Next one, we have The Miz versus Dexter Loomis story, which involves now Johnny Gargano. I really like the story, so it's an up. So basically, the story continued with The Miz talking with Johnny Gargano in the hallways, and Johnny Gargano obviously said that The Miz should tell the truth. Miz came out in the ring trying to tell some sort of a truth, but Johnny Gargano again confronted him and said that this is not the truth. With that much truth involved, our truth came out. And this was a little bit random, and I didn't like it that much but the whole segment is getting an up, as I said. Uh, basically, there was a match, Arthur Root versus The Miz, and the match ended by a distraction. Arthur Root won by a distraction because uh, The Miz was uh, distracted by Johnny Gargano, who was dressed up as Dexter Loomis, and The Miz was scared and all of that stuff. Next one, Elias and Rido versus Alpha Academy is the segment that I'm talking about, basically. The whole thing gets an up. I don't know why, but I'm so excited about everything that Riddle is involved with. Even though I don't particularly like the Alpha Academy, I like the idea behind Riddle and Elias teaming up. There was a uh, backstage segment where Rido and Elias were talking and Elias said that he doesn't appreciate that Rido interrupted him last week. Alpha Academy said that Elias is not musically gifted and Rido is dumb, something like that. Because of that confrontation, we had Elias versus Chad Cable. Maybe Gable should consider that name change in order to become more interesting. And basically we had that match. Elias won after that Alpha Academy attacked Elias from the back. Rido came to help and uh, we had Rido and Elias uh, standing uh, still and winning. Basically, I have that opinion about Alpha Academy for a long time. They had shoes and thank you and they're still kind of boring and I don't want them to be boring. Really, seriously, I just don't know what they're missing, maybe bring back the goofball audience. I think this is the missing ingredient. Austin Theory versus Mustafali. We have that match. I don't know why, but basically this is some sort of the few that is between Mustafali and Seth Rollins because Seth Rollins came out as a commentary during the match. It's a great match. Everything that Mustafa Ali is involved in is great and everyone is hating on Theory, but Theory has a great selling, he has some great moves and good my skills, so I understand why WWE is pushing Theory, kind of. So basically, the match was great, but the match ended because Seth in uh, interfered and basically Theory was able to pin Mustafa. Uh, after that, Seth attacked Mustafa, but uh, right before Seth was about to leave, Mustafa got the upper hand and beat up Seth and yeah. He, had, he said that he's his freaking problem, whatever that means. That whole shtick, an up. 
Almost versus four unknown guys. This is my first down. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is my first down, yeah? For everyone who is asking how to fix Omos, I don't know, man. He's just a big dude. And because of the fact that he's big dude, doesn't mean that he's necessarily good. You guys tried everything. You paired him with uh, Bobby Lashley. You paired him with another giant that was, was involved with Apollo Crews. Uh, you involved uh, him with uh, another giant that I don't remember now. Now you're... Uh, now, now you pair him up with Braun Strowman and... The best thing you will get out of this is uh, Rin Braun Strowman's return. That's the best thing you can get. Even with MVP, almost is not interesting. Bro. Sorry, it's even if he beats up 10 guys, it's not working because at this day and age, people are perfectly aware of what is WWE. And even if you give to almost like 20 guys, it shows nothing. We had a Johnny Wrestling and JBL interaction, which led to Baron Corbin and Johnny Wrestling having a match. Why am I saying Johnny Wrestling when it's Johnny Gargano? I'm gonna go give that segment an up, but I really don't like JBL and Baron Corbin. I don't like them, not because they're heels. I just don't like them. I like heels, but I don't like JBL. I remember watching JBL as a kid. This was the segment that I was always missing because I was just not interested. It's not even that I dislike JBL. I don't care about the JBL. A few minutes ago, when I was re-watching Raw, so I can see what to include and what to not to include in that video, I just noticed what JBL was talking in his promo. And it's basically inside jokes about the States of America. How can I be interested in that? So that's why probably I'm not interested and I was never interested. Baron Corbin, he has a potential. I really liked... Baron Corbin as a heel, as a Constable Corbin, I think was his persona. Persona, persona, you understand me. The match itself, great. Johnny Gargano had some beef with JBL. JBL interfered while the referee was not watching. Baron Corbin won. Nothing interesting, really. Johnny Gargano, MVP. You carried the whole thing. Johnny Gargano is funny. Another thing that is receiving down. Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. <sighs> yeah, it's not interesting. I don't have anything against Bobby Lashley. He has every tool in his arsenal to be great. But something is missing, bro. S something is missing. Probably his mic skills. I don't know. I'm that kind of guy who is really watching the promos more than the actual matches. So probably that's why I'm not a big fan of Bobby. Sorry. Sorry, Brock. Don't beat me up. Bobby, don't beat me up as well. It's just... Guys, it's just not interesting. Bianca Belair versus Bailey up. Good match. What can I say? And we have another return. Nikki Cross returned as Nikki Cross, not Nikki A.S.H. Nikki Sage or whatever that comic hero persona was. That was definitely not interesting. I remember Nikki Cross not being interesting as well, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And it's exciting because she returned. Good shit. In general, good show. Uh, it's my first ups and downs, so I'm gonna give it an up. Overall, it's normal. It's my first uh, YouTube video that I'm talking about WWE for more than five minutes. That was a lie. I have a couple of other WWE videos, but I wanted to do that kind of video for a long time. So you guys understand. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'm going to see you um, later this week uh, for SmackDown. Awkward.